in the spooky depths of Latin America hide some very horrifying urban legends. And now, they will be making their way to Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights 2023 in Hollywood. I tried my best to make that like exciting and creepy at the same time, but we failed. <laughs> What's up everybody and welcome back to Exploring Attractions. As always, my name is Scott and you're watching your stop for all things theme park and attraction related. And before we get into this video, please make sure you're subscribed with those bell notifications on. And if you enjoy the video at the end, leave it a like because it helps out the channel a whole lot. But why am I so happy and excited today? It's because I finally get to break it down the Halloween Horror Nights Midsummer Scream panel that happened this past weekend in Long Beach, California, where we got a couple of announcements and a couple of teases of what is potentially coming to this year's HHN in Hollywood. So I'm going to try my absolute best to kind of break down everything that John Murdy, creative director, talked about during this panel um, to the best of my ability from what I remember and from what I'm re-looking really at. But if you want to watch the entire HHM panel, make sure to go check out our friends over at TLAV Media. They always post the panels and post great content, so make sure to leave them a subscribe while you're there, which can be found linked down below in the description. <laughs> So, Mr. John came out with a bang and immediately teased us with an announcement with his famous quote, By the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. And then he announced a brand new original haunted house coming to Halloween Horror Nights located in the Parisian Courtyard, which is, of course, Monstros, the monsters of Latin America. There will be three different monsters featured in this haunted house, and lots of people were speculating that this could be La Lechuza, which is a legend that they have down in Mexico. And well, not only are we getting La Lechuza, but we're also getting two other monsters. Dala La Pucci, which I think that's how you say it, and El Sabon. So three different monsters, and Murdy shared a lot of their design and what they're supposed to look like. So for example, with the Tala Lapucci, there's one version of it that's slowly starting to feast on everyone's flesh. And then there's a version that has already been feasting on everyone's flesh. Looks absolutely terrifying. I can't wait to see that in person. You have La Latruza, which is the bird witch, is the best way to describe it, or owl witch, as you could say. Here we get a great concept of that. They're doing something really neat with La Latruza. I think it's going to be something that's never done before, or at least like to the level of uh, any other haunt out there. And then, of course, like I said, El Sabon, which he's more of like the creepy, kind of menacing Joker esque type of character. And he preys on womanizers and drunks and with the womanizers he rips their spine out as you can see in his character sculpt that he is holding the spine of one of his victims so those are going to be the three monsters featured in monstros i'm really excited for this i mean when they first started to put up the facade i was like that has to be some form of latin american haunted house obviously the rumors came up with la lechuza and then there's rumors of it being based around el pueblo de terror which was a scare zone last year attached to la llorona but no instead we're getting monstros which honestly i think is a lot better and speaking of the facade murdy did share a look at the color elevation of what the facade look like once it's all said and done and complete obviously when where you walk in there's the wording of monstrous which i think is a really neat ad now if you don't know what this facade is going to be it's called the cemetery of the lost basically this is where all the victims of these different monsters live for the rest of their inter eternal lives like they're buried here at this mausoleum kind of colorful and looks really neat with all the detail as he did share like an actual look at the construction in progress all the detail looks absolutely amazing and if you notice there's a little door on the left hand side not the one that you enter in there's an extra door there and why is there an extra door well that's because there's going to be an outdoor interactive character scaring guests jumping out of guests doing different audio cues and his name is muerte which essentially means death now, Death the Gravedigger will be out there. Like I said, he'll have his shovel. He'll be dressed in a black cloak and look like just like a regular skeleton. And he will be watching over the Cemetery of the Lost and getting guests ready as they're about to walk in. And as you walk in, you'll walk into the crypt. This is where you'll see all the different victims, bones, and skeletons. It's really neat because not only did he share a color elevation for this, but he also shared 
sneak peek inside the house as well, which typically they don't do before the event or before any of the behind the scenes tour. So I think that's pretty exciting that he was able to share all of that with us. But then we go into more scenes like the transformation scene, but I did tease something with La Lechuza. Now with La Lechuza, they're doing something absolutely incredible. We've seen different animated figures in the past. Obviously, we saw the giant La Llorona one return last year. We've seen different ones at different haunt events and everything. Well, this year, they're putting together an amazing animated figure for the nest. And where the nest is located at is where this La Latruza animated figure will sit. Murdy has described this as an absolute massive figure that is going to look way bigger in person and this is going to make for an incredible scene i mean they even showed us like a little bit of a test of the animated figure without anything on it and of course you'll have the arms you'll have the head and everything attached to it when it's all said and done so it'll make it look even bigger i mean what they pulled off with la yorona i can't wait to see what they pull off with la latruza now to kind of get an idea of like the different transition and how is this going to work transferring from different monsters and everything. Well, they're actually going back to Lucas Crankshaw, I believe his name is, who's done a lot of the artwork such as artwork in Holidays in Hell and other uh, originals like that to where they're having those designs of the different monsters to kind of transition you into the next scene, into their area of the house so i think that's really cool lucas always does an amazing job with all the artwork so i'm pretty excited for that but we move into el saban's area after la lechuza where you're going into a bar and murdy described this area as like they're gonna have a victim laying on the table into where el saban is ripping out the spine of this victim it's going to make for a really neat practical effect and then there's something that he teased to where you're going to actually walk into el sabon's sack which is very terrifying and what do you find in el sabon's sack well he left us with uh, nothing he said you'll have to find out yourself but all the sculpts and everything for these different monsters look terrifying like i'm actually kind of terrified to walk through this especially since i loved la llorona so much um and i think that la llorona it or la llorona is one of my favorite haunted houses that hornet has ever done so with this being kind of the same vibe you know having a latin american story i i'm so pumped for it and then murdy moved into the scare zone talk obviously there has to be a scare zone attached to this persian courtyard haunted house i mean there has been for the recent couple years that they've been doing persian courtyard houses and extending them a little bit and this scare zone will be called el terror de las momias and the theme of the scare zone will be kind of like b themed horror movies that were released in mexico to where they kept trying and trying and they were failing at the box office because they're really corny just like how some b horror movies are very corny in america too but they have that like, kind of comic book feel to them um, that's essentially what this scare zone is going to be based on. So you have like an Aztec warrior as one of the characters. Obviously, you have to have the stilt walker in there. You have different villagers with axes coming at you. I mean, this scare zone is going to be a lot of fun. We got a good idea of the entire lineup of different characters that we'll see on the French Street scare zone right after Monstros, the monster's house. But that pretty much wraps it up for Monstros as far as the different teases that he gave us for that and in between his transitions from Monstros to Universal Monsters Unmask something popped up on the screen it says Project Eggplant Larry Lava and of course you know he did a little joke where it says note to self announcement delay delete from deck prior to Midsummer Scream don't forget but there is a concept for Larry Larva and then it looks like a test of the different prosthetics and costumes now there has been a rumor that exterminators could potentially be the terror tram for this year's event and that was rumored on the hn nightmare speculation map so one thing comes to my mind when i see this obviously they're doing something with uh eggplant larry lava type of theme here some form of exterminators theme now i'm gonna go out on a limb here right and i know nothing but there's been two houses that have not been announced. I believe it's two. Yes, it's two. The rumored Holidays in Hell one, which that's looking like it's going to be Holidays in Hell. And on top of that, we also have the former location of Universal Horror Hotel, where Walking Dead once sat. Lots of rumors pointing to Evil Dead Rise for that. But if you think about it, wouldn't an IP already be announced? Could this potentially be 
a bug's haunted house. A bug's eaten alive haunted house, that is, from Orlando. We've seen Hollywood do Orlando originals in the past. Could we see bugs coming to that horror hotel location? We'll just have to wait and see. Like I said, I don't know anything. Um, so if I'm right, Universal, please don't get mad at me. But I just, that comes to my head. As soon as that popped up, that came to my head about bugs eating alive, making its way over to Hollywood. So maybe, or maybe it could be exterminators. We don't know. Now, walk around characters were a huge success last year. Um, walk around characters meaning the giant King Crow stilt walker that was way bigger than any stilt walker. It was so popular. It had terrifying red glowing eyes. Well, this year there's going to be a murder of crows. And a murder of crows is a group of crows. Three different giant crow stilt walkers roaming around the event. Most likely around the upper lot because that's where King Crow was last year. The Brighter Frankenstein being a walk around character. And La Llorona being a walk around character. Which I think is so awesome. I mean, if anything, the Brighter Frankenstein will probably be a walk around character down in the Curious George area because that's where the Universal Monsters house is going. Whew, okay, lots of information. But last but not least, Universal Monsters Unmasked. We got some more details about Universal Monsters Unmasked and exactly how this house is going to play out. And essentially, we're going to be taking a trip in the underground catacombs of Paris. The catacombs are open for a limited time in Paris as nobody has wanted to search these catacombs because they're afraid of what they might find in these catacombs. And catacombs are an actual real thing that you can go uh, visit in Paris. Very creepy, very terrifying. But if you don't want to go to Paris, you can go to the Universal Monsters Unmasked Haunted House at Halloween Horror Night. So he provided us with the different concepts of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde as far as how they're going to look inside of this haunted house. You have the Invisible Man, which will make his grand return to Halloween Horror Nights after seeing him at Universal Monsters 2018. And the facade is going to be an English language French newspaper where they'll have projections on the screen and the projections will really bring the whole facade to life. Now, like I said on Twitter, I'm a little bit concerned about this facade, but I'm sure it'll come out great just as Holidays in Hell did with the projections bringing it to life. Um, they actually just put up the newspaper on the facade right now. Uh, shout out to the guys at HHN 365 for capturing that first. Right outside of it will be a newspaper stand to where you'll see a figure in there talking about how the catacombs are open for the first time in forever. Um, and people who are brave enough to go in the catacombs should be warned because they don't know what's down there. We got a character design look at the rat lady and there's an actual makeup test for the rat lady too which was neat that he shared. And here's a sneak peek at the catacombs. From all the pictures that I've seen from the ones in Paris, this looks nearly identical and I'm quite excited about that because I think when you walk into this haunted house, not only is it going to make you feel uneasy but it's also going to get your heart racing to where all these different skulls are around you and adding to the skulls and making you uncomfortable. There'll be characters jumping out of nowhere, which I think is going to be terrifying. Like, I'm really excited for Unmasked, especially since it gives an opportunity for different universal monsters that aren't Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman to shine. Like I said, Invisible Man, Phantom of the Opera, Dr. Jekyll, etc., etc. Whew. But like I said, that was everything that we got from the Halloween Horror Nights 2023 panel at Midsummer Scream. Let me know down below in the comments section if I forgot anything and I want to know down below what you're most excited about from that panel that he talked about. And as always, there is a John Murdy interview up on our channel that we did a quick little interview with Murdy after the panel. So huge shout out to Murdy for taking the time to do that. And huge shout out to the PR team at Universal for allowing us to do it for another year. So check that out in the description as well. But that's going to wrap it up for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe down below with those bell notifications on and leave the video a like if you did enjoy it. But as always, my name is Scott. You've been watching Exploring Attractions. Positivity is key. And most importantly, remember to keep exploring. Peace out, everybody.